Lung Cancer Symptoms and Treatments Have you ever wondered why lung cancer is such a widespread concern affecting millions across the globe? What if you learned that the non-small cell lung cancer, a particular kind of lung cancer, dominates this conflict? Let's set out on a mission to address these urgent problems and discover the secrets of NSCLC from its prevalence to its possible remedies. Among the most prevalent cancers globally, lung cancer is a global health problem. Millions of individuals are adversely impacted by its dangerously high incidence each year. Lung cancer is a main cause of cancer-related fatalities and a considerable health burden. This concerning prevalence emphasizes the importance of comprehending lung cancer in depth. Approximately 85% of instances of lung cancer fall under the category of non-small cell lung cancer. As a result, NSCLC is now the most common kind of lung cancer worldwide. The designation NSCLC refers to the affected cells, particularly those that line the bigger pulmonary airways. It is essential to comprehend the incidence of NSCLC since it highlights the want for efficient screening, early identification, and cutting-edge therapy alternatives to battle this pervasive illness. Early identification and prompt intervention are essential to treat lung cancer, particularly NSCLC, effectively. NSCLC may not exhibit observable symptoms early, making diagnosis difficult. Treatment may become less successful as the illness worsens because it might become more aggressive and spread to other areas of the body. Therefore, it is crucial to recognize the significance of early detection. Early detection may boost the effectiveness of therapy, improve the patient's quality of life, and raise survival rates. Non-small cell lung cancer predominantly impacts the bigger lungs' airways. This specific kind of lung cancer first develops in the bronchial tubes that carry air to and from the lungs. Normal lung cells mutate genetically during the development of NSCLC, causing uncontrolled cell proliferation and the establishment of malignant tumors. People may have serious repercussions depending on where the NSCLC is located in the bigger airways. One important effect is the possibility of breathing problems when NSCLC tumors grow and restrict airways. This may cause several symptoms, especially during strenuous activity, such as wheezing, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. These symptoms impact a person's general health and quality of life. It's also critical to understand that people may not exhibit any symptoms in the early stages of NSCLC when tumors are tiny and confined. Since symptoms tend to worsen as cancer advances, this emphasizes the need for early identification via screening and improved awareness. Now let's talk about non-small cell lung cancer early symptoms. In the early stages of non-small cell lung cancer, individuals may not experience noticeable symptoms. It may be difficult to recognize the illness during its early stages due to the lack of obvious symptoms. Early stage NSCLC thus often remains undetected until the disease advances to more severe stages. People may start to experience various symptoms when non-small cell lung cancer progresses, which may greatly impact how they feel. These symptoms develop in stages and include 1. Persistent cough. One of the most typical signs of NSCLC is a persistent cough. This cough may be persistent, lasting long, and not responding to conventional cough medications. Sometimes the cough may worsen over time, causing people to seek medical help. 2. Shortness of breath. Also known as dyspnea, shortness of breath might amplify with time in NSCLC patients. Regular breathing might be challenging for some people, particularly while exercising. The tumor's interference with lung function and airway blockage often cause this discomfort. 3. Chest pain. As the disease spreads to the lung tissues and adjacent structures, persistent chest pain or discomfort may be a prominent symptom of NSCLC. This discomfort could be felt when inhaling deeply, coughing, or even laughing. It has to be treated carefully and examined by a medical expert. 4. Unintentional weight loss. Unintentional and unexplained weight loss is a troubling sign often linked to NSCLC. 
Even without changing their diet or activity habits, people may lose weight. This weight loss may be the result of metabolic changes brought on by cancer, a decreased appetite, or trouble swallowing. 5. Fatigue NSCLC may be present if you feel weak or weary after enough rest. Fatigue brought on by cancer may significantly affect a person's everyday life and general well-being. It is critical to distinguish between this exhaustion and ordinary weariness since it may be a sign of underlying health problems. Although these symptoms are often linked to NSCLC, it's crucial to remember that they are not exclusive to the illness and may be brought on by several other disorders. But if any of these signs and symptoms linger or worsen over time, people should go to the doctor immediately to get a complete examination and diagnosis. Improved outcomes and more effective treatment options are possible due to early NSCLC identification. Now let's talk about non-small cell lung cancer treatment options. Non-small cell lung cancer treatment plans take into consideration several important aspects, such as 1. Cancer stage. The stage of cancer, which depicts how far it has gone throughout the body, is crucial in deciding the best course of therapy. Several treatment options may be available depending on whether NSCLC is in its early stages, localized to the lungs, or has moved to more advanced stages with distant metastases. 2. Patient's general health. The patient's general health and degree of fitness are crucial factors. A patient's tolerance and responsiveness to different therapies, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, are evaluated. This assessment aids in customizing the treatment strategy to each person's unique requirements and capacities. 3. Specific NSCLC subtype. NSCLC encompasses various subtypes with distinct genetic characteristics. It's crucial to determine the precise subtype of NSCLC since certain treatment options, including targeted therapy, target particular genetic abnormalities or protein expressions seen in cancer cells. This individualized strategy tries to increase therapeutic efficacy while reducing negative effects. Let's now discuss surgical options. When the cancer is restricted to the lungs and has not progressed to other organs, surgery is often advised for people with early stage NSCLC. Surgery's main goal is to remove the tumor and any afflicted tissue around it to eradicate cancer cells. Now let's talk about radiation therapy. High energy radiation to target and destroy cancer cells. Radiation therapy uses high energy X-rays or other forms of radiation to target and destroy cancer cells precisely. Whether used alone or in conjunction with surgery or chemotherapy, it's an effective therapeutic choice for NSCLC. Advanced NSCLC symptoms may be reduced and tumor size decreased most effectively with radiation treatment. Now, let's discuss chemotherapy. Use of powerful drugs to kill or inhibit cancer cells. Chemotherapy involves administering potent drugs that either directly kill cancer cells or inhibit their growth and division. To increase the efficacy of other therapies like surgery or radiation therapy, this one is often utilized in the later stages of NSCLC. Let's now discuss targeted therapy. Drugs that target specific genetic mutations or proteins in cancer cells. Targeted treatments are designed to target genes or proteins found in NSCLC cells selectively. Targeted treatment may successfully stop the spread of the disease and reduce damage to healthy cells by focusing on these particular mutations. In advanced NSCLC with certain genetic abnormalities, this strategy has shown potential. Let's now discuss immunotherapy. Stimulates the immune system to recognize and attack cancer cells. Immunotherapy is a groundbreaking treatment that stimulates the body's immune system to recognize and attack cancer cells. It has shown notable efficacy in treating advanced NSCLC, improving overall survival rates, and producing long-lasting effects in certain patients. In the fight against NSCLC, immunotherapy has become a crucial tool. Let's now discuss palliative care. Focus on symptom relief, improving quality of life and pain management. Palliative care is a specialized form of medical care that enhances the quality of life 
for individuals with NSCLC. It deals with symptom alleviation, pain control, and the reduction of adverse effects from therapy. The comfort and well-being of NSCLC patients may be greatly enhanced by palliative care, particularly when the cancer is advanced. Each of these treatment choices is thoroughly analyzed and catered to the patient's specific needs, ensuring that the selected strategy optimizes the likelihood of a good outcome while reducing side effects. Patients and their healthcare providers must work closely to choose the best treatment plan. That's all for this video. We'll be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time.